7,000 years ago, the first really oceanic people came out of China and came out of Taiwan. Then you get to Polynesia, this oceanic country bounded by Hawaii in the north and New Zealand in the southwest and Rapa Nui in the east. 10 million square miles, bigger than Russia. And it was discovered by these extraordinary people. They were really the astronauts of our ancestors. They were the greatest explorers on the face of the Earth. You know, our ancestors not were only just great navigators, they were great stewards of these islands. The time that the first Europeans came, the journals of Captain Cook talked about, you know, large populations, maybe 800,000. That, that's the median. It, it could be even higher. It's approaching maybe the numbers of people that are living on Hawaii today. They figured it out, how to live well on these islands, and I think that is the challenge of the time for planet Earth and all of humanity. It's to figure that out. How are you gonna do that? Hokulea is pulling us into a direction of asking the question, are you gonna be responsible and are you gonna take action? Are you gonna do something with what you have? You got a voyage in Kuro. Hokulea, Hawaii's iconic voyaging canoe, has reawakened cultural pride and identity throughout the Pacific. And today, she is circumnavigating the globe to carry and collect stories and messages of Malama Honua, caring for island earth, in the hope of growing a movement that will help to navigate our world into a more sustainable future. We're gonna go around the world, and we're gonna take the risk to do it because the greater risk is to not act. The greater risk is to be apathetic. The greater risk is to remain ignorant. And the greater risk is not to take action. The worldwide voyage will cover 60,000 nautical miles, 100 ports, and 27 nations to share, connect, and learn from communities the importance of our precious natural resources, especially our oceans. The worldwide voyage is an idea whose time has come. It's almost like a prayer to bring people from around the world together to really make it obvious that the ocean unites everyone. Water is the key to life, and most water is ocean, 97% of Earth's water is out there in the ocean. It's also where most of life on Earth is. To bring awareness to people no matter where they live, from the tops of mountains to the deserts to high population to communities that have never seen the ocean, never touched the ocean, to make them aware that the ocean touches them. With every drop of water they drink, every breath they take, they are connected and to bring them as a part of this voyage and change the way we do things. We, we have to. You will never protect something you don't understand. And you're also not gonna protect it if you don't care. So this worldwide voyage was going to go learn about the earth, going to see the people who do care, help us reshape this new kind of sail plan meshing indigenous ancient wisdom with technology and science and bringing it together. If you went around in 1976 and tried to collect declarations on protecting the world's oceans, you'd probably come up with zero. People wouldn't even know what you're talking about. But today, climate change, the health of the oceans have got to be one of the top, most important issues that islanders are faced with collectively. And so what we found was um, fear that, uh, that things are going wrong, islands are drowning, contemplation of selling your homeland, the notion that you're going to be a refugee, you're going to have to move. Those are all real issues because they're coming real time in Tuvalu and Micronesia and many other places that we know of and many other places that we went. It's carrying those directional hopes and aspirations, especially these people on small islands that up until now had no political voice. 
But when you shift and look at the existing kind of laws, like the exclusive economic zone, the Pacific Islands uh, right now are in consideration of protecting the oceans around their individual countries. It's going to be four and a half times bigger than the continental United States. So it's a different way of looking at property and responsibility. Science is saying you got to get at least 30% of the oceans protected to be able to curb things like loss of wildlife and the chemistry and the biology of the oceans. And the oceans are the engine of life on the Earth. So when we began this voyage, the estimate we were at 2.5% of the world's oceans were under so-called protection. You know, we nearly almost doubled that already. And that's highly significant. We've had a chance to explore. We've had a chance to learn. We've had a chance to connect to extraordinary leaders. Uh, and I will say that some of the best leadership I've seen in the World Wide Wars are on the smallest islands and the poorest countries. The ones that had nothing to do with impacting climate change, the ones that will suffer the most first, and the ones that arguably right now are taking the best action to change the trajectory of climate change and its impact on the earth and the thing that we call life. We have collected all these extraordinary rich stories from the Pacific and from the Indian Ocean and even the Atlantic, and we're taking it back in the bottle, back to the United Nations, to the Secretary General. It's gonna be where we hand off our story. After traveling 25,000 nautical miles in 25 months, Hokulea arrived in New York City. Never has a Polynesian voyaging canoe sailed up the Hudson River to dock among the towering skyscrapers of the Manhattan skyline. And the momentous event was marked by the unified chanting and drumming of five Native American nations. In a traditional Hawaiian ava ceremony, a delegation of Native Hawaiians honored Hokulea for her long voyage, safely transporting her many crew members. A traditional smudging or a Native American purification ritual, chants and songs honoring the worldwide voyage rang out among a crowd of thousands. 
Kopele, Kokane, Milohai, Kokane, Apua, Kohia, Kakanoia, Kapoli, Opele, Ihi, Paka, 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 Kupaka, Kula, Loku, Kaula, Naeko, Holo, Aho, Kule. The pinnacle of Hokule'a's time in New York City was an intimate ceremony on World Oceans Day with United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. On behalf of the United Nations, I'd like to thank and congratulate uh, Mr. Thompson and Cruz and for their courage and voyage and congratulations on arriving here in New York with uh, Hokulea. Uh, this is my 10th year as a Secretary General of the United Nations, so uh, I have seen the United Nations from many angles, but I have never had this view from our headquarters. Uh, today I will speak briefly about perspective. Your voyage was a testament to the power of island people. You showed the resilience of island culture and the timeless value of wisdom of island people. Island perspective has enriched our world. Oceans may seem endless, but there is a limit to how we should use them. We are dangerously close to breaking that limit. The way we treat our oceans affect their future, our bio biodiversity, and the overall well-being of people and the planet. On this World Oceans Day, we recommit to using their gifts peacefully, equitably, and sustainably. Uh, people may wonder, what can I do? Just one person, or even their family or community, may seem too small to make difference. We can be inspired by the example of this wonderful vessel, Hokulea. Secretary General, you made a promise to us that you would do what you can with the membership of the Earth, the only island we got, um, that you would do something for the oceans. And that became the light and the vision and the idea. So when you thank us for our courage, you don't need to, because we thank you for yours, that we sailed in your light of your courage in what you're doing for the earth. So if you would please allow us to uh, give you a few uh, things from Hawaii that are reflective of how we feel about you. And we've collected um, declarations from countries, from organizations in the Pacific, in the Indian, in the Atlantic, from communities, from people, from children, from Hawaii uh, that made thousands of peace flags and we, we binded it up into a COA framed book to know that what you did for us in Apia 
matters not just for us, but for the earth. And these are declarations for the world's oceans. If you could please receive it for us, we would be very grateful. Among the many beautiful exchanges of the day was a name chant composed by the Hawaii delegation for UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. We recognize that the healing of the earth will take place, but it'll take place only if we all commit. So we pledge on the voyaging canoe in a very humble way to do our part in a tiny little way and to know that the greatest wealth that we have gained from this voyage is you. Friendships, relationships, partnerships, strength, 